We Knife Company press check. What were you thinking? I am, I am torn on this because this is a beautiful, gorgeous knife. And it's just got so many things that are wrong with it. So yeah, we're going to have to break into that. But first, I do have to do the YouTuber thing, guys. There's a bunch of affiliate links down below. Everything that you purchase through there doesn't cost you anything at checkout, but it does support the channel. So now let's turn this thing around and look at it from above and look at possibly the Wii, the worst Wii knife I've ever seen. So turn out a volume. Here comes a little bit of music. Maybe I'll find something depressing. <laughs> I want to start this off by saying to any of the fanboys, I am just stating my opinions. I really, really tried to love this knife uh, because it, I, the second I opened it, I was like, oh man, I want to like this knife. I hope it's good. And unfortunately, in my opinion, it is not. Um, this is the Wii press check and it's just, it had so many things going for it that it could have been great. And they just, it just seems to me like they dropped the ball on it. So I'm going to put up a spec sheet over here. Um, I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going to, well, yeah, we'll go ahead. We'll get the weight and we'll get the behind the edge and blade stock thickness and everything. But like I said, over here is the spec sheet for this knife. Um, this is done in titanium and G10 with blue G10 accents. Um, it is layered blue and so this is one piece. So there's a black G10 layer on top of the blue, the blue G10 pivot collars um, and things like that, which are really, really beautiful. Good looking blade. It is a very nice blade. Uh, when I did use this, uh, the very little I used it, it is a nice functional blade. It is an Elijah Witt's design. Um, and I was hoping for so much because I have got an Elijahwitz design that I really like, and it's that uh, X1MF, the mini flip by Hogue. And it's a great design. It's got a really good uh, feel to it and stuff like that. This knife, however, doesn't. So let's look at the let's look at the two specs I said. We'll get the weight and we'll get the blade stock thickness and by the hedge so you guys can see that. Um, and then we'll talk about the knife in general. So let's go ahead and get the calipers out and take a good look at this behind the edge and uh, behind the edge thickness and blade stock thickness. All right, blade stock thickness first. So in blade stock, you're looking at 0.1275. So I imagine it's probably listed at around 13.13 ish because there's going to be variations. Those variations will come from finishing and things like that. But so the blade stock thickness is an approximation as is going to be the behind the edge thickness. So behind the edge on this, right behind the edge, 0 0.0250 ish right behind the edge. And like I said, that's gonna vary on grind and things like that. Even though these are production knives, you will have some variation on stuff like that. So there you go on that. Let's go ahead and get this out of the way and I gotta go figure out where my wife put the scale. All right guys, let's get some weight on this. I have to tell you, um, I'm doing some stuff for my daughter that typically is out of character for me. My daughter, my daughter has asked me to move away from the aluminum based deodorant antiperspirant. And I got news for you. I can smell myself. It's not working. I am not the guy that can use just deodorant. Okay, so weight on this in ounces. I'm a stinky, stinky dude. Um, three and seven eighths ounces. It's not super heavy. It's it's well. It's a it's an easy knife to carry when I did carry it. Uh, in grams, for those of you who don't use Freedom units, um, 110 grams. So let's go ahead and get this scale out of the way. And like I said, these weights may vary a little bit because. As I say, this is not the most accurate of scales, even though Nick Shabazz did certify it. So let's go ahead and get the scale out of there. All right, let's take a close look at this knife. Now, on first blush, this knife is gorgeous. It, I will not at all say that it is not a beautiful, attractive knife. It does have some good stuff going for it. It has got an attractive, attractive look with this backspacer that's been brought down to these angles, gives it a good look. Like I mentioned before, that two-tone G10 
is amazing looking with the blue and black. The backspacer marries up. It is so smooth. You cannot feel the transition into the G10. You can barely feel these gaps here. It is so neatly, neatly and smoothly milled. Same with this till you get to here. And then here, it is done so incredibly well. I would expect nothing else from We Knife Company. As far as action, the action on it, listen to that. It has got a good, good action. Snap, bang, it pops open. The blade, the blade is one of the most attractive blades I've seen in a while. Instead of just having like straight clean lines, this is all rounded. Your swedge is rounded, your fuller is rounded down and it gives it an incredible look. It looks, this looks like a predatory fish. It reminded me of an orca. I like that look. It looks like a predatory animal from the sea. And I do know that an orca is technically a dolphin, not a fish. But like I said, it just looks like a predatory marine animal. It looks like it belongs in the water. It's very attractive. The blade does cut well. It cut well and it came very, very sharp. It's in 20 CV with a very super fine, it's either a super fine bead, uh, bead blast or glass beads, I'm not sure which. Really nice and smooth. It does fingerprint a lot, you can see, but it's an attractive blade finish. Their markings and everything are, are done really well. We Knife Company is always on it when it comes to fit and finish and quality. So you're looking at a really nice looking knife. Now, let's go ahead. Those are your good points. And that's about all I've got. Well, I mean, but it is just really attractive. And in pocket, I'm not going to lie, in pocket, it carries really well. Let's listen to the tension. So tension on jeans is tight. That is very tight. In track pants, it's just about perfect. I will say that in a pair of 511s, pocket clip is too tight. But the pocket clip itself, for all the other things that are wrong with this knife, pocket clip is not a hot spot. So if you're into a deep carry pocket clip that's not a hot spot, that's the way to go with this pocket clip. Unfortunately, the rest of the knife, I cannot say that about. So let's go ahead and get into the laundry list of bad things about this knife. First of all, this knife is short. It is too short. You can't get up on it. It's not something that is at all comfortable to use. When you get up on it in the proper way, you can't get, it's not a full three finger or it's not three and a half. You just... It's like Ricky Bobby. I don't know what to do with my hands. I don't know what to do with this finger. It's uncomfortable when I put it on it, and then if I try to take it off, I'm back behind it. It is not meant for someone my size. Now, I'm sure that this might fit other people's hands perfectly, and they're going to like, yeah, that's not a hot spot for me. But let's go ahead and get into the rest of it. So, when you choke up and get up on that knife, you are right on that jimping, on that flipper tab. That flipper tab is hot. It is a severe hot spot. And I don't care how I've tried to use it. It is a very, very hot spot. And the only way I found to use this knife where it's not a hot spot is a pinch grip. And if you're trying to do heavy cutting, you're not doing it in a pinch grip. That's the only way I've found that this knife is comfortable in hand. This is a crazy design thing. I mentioned it in the Vero. I'm mentioning it now. This is all sharp. And then it's got a spot right here that digs. Can you see it? It digs right into your finger. Yes, I did jam something that far up under my thumbnail and it was not pleasant. Uh, it is incredibly hot spotty. And then right behind it, no matter where you put your finger, there's another one right there. It's hot spot back to back. You're in pinch city. Your finger, when you've got a hold of that knife, is pinched in between there and there. Can you see it? That is ridiculous. That should not be on a knife this expensive. And I'm going to tell you right now, I have to look the price up because it slipped my mind and I forgot to write it down. So hang on a second. We're going to talk about price point on this after we uh, get to the, uh, you know, get through the bad things because this is not a super cheap knife. That is insanely sharp right there. That is insanely sharp. It sticks way out. That is the worst I've seen it on any knife so far that is a bolster lock. I like bolster locks. I think they kind of bridge that gap between liners and full frame locks, and it gets you some weight reduction. Uh, I love the Osprey. I love some of the other uh, bolster locks. But this one, no, not at all. Um, 
like I said, there is no comfortable spot. And once you do get it on it and I'm on it, then the pocket clip does start to dig into the hand. It's not a hot spot per se, but it definitely, you're very aware of it. And if you're using this knife, like heavy using this knife, it is going to drive you nuts. It's going to hurt your hands. There is no comfortable way to hold this knife. And then on top of everything else, they have not left you much way to disengage that lock. I'm trying to find a way to show you. That is pretty much dead even, and it's tight in there. This should have been scalloped out much better. Let me grab a knife and show an example of what I'm talking about. I grabbed a couple of examples of how good it could. The Artisan, this is that Artisan Mastiff. See how they didn't give you a really tall relief here, but what they did was they cut that out nice and deep, and it stands up, and it accentuates the fact that you can get in on it. Another one that does it really well is the TS383. Once again, not a large difference in height, but they've scalloped that out so that they maximize the amount of space in there for you to get your finger in on it. Ease of release. And then one of the knives I think that does it the best and exemplifies it the best is the PMP Big Boy. They did it in a fashion where you have just a slight, I mean, it is a very slight difference in height, but they took out all that material. And what that hap what that does is it, it makes that gap wider so that you can get in on it. If you look on this one, they really didn't do that at all. They didn't give you much gap. See how much more space you have to access? And it's not that this knife is any wider. It's just you have more space to access that. It's not done cut out as well as it should be. That should come further up onto that flat. So, and you know, I, I'm not gonna get too much. I, I don't wanna tear in it too badly. Um, but the fact is at the price point, you're looking at a knife that is $250 for it to have that much wrong with it. I mean, if you just want a knife for show and looks and you're not somebody that's gonna use it, you'd probably be good with this, but it is pretty bad in hand. For me, and at least in my opinion, it's pretty bad in hand. Now, like I said, if you're a fanboy, you love this knife, you don't have to stop loving this knife. These are just my opinions. And like I said, I do this specifically so that you're not flying into things blind because there aren't many brick and mortar uh, knife stores anymore. So a lot of times people are going to get their information that they get from knives from reviews. And if I just only say nice things about knives, you're going to get a knife that you might be disappointed in. So I don't care where a knife comes from. This could come from the maker. It can come from the designer. It could come from the company. I'm not going to hold back and not tell you the bad things about a knife. I don't like to do bad reviews, but I think every once in a while we have to. And is this an overall bad review? No. This just is a knife that, in my opinion, could be reworked and fixed a lot of these issues. Like, seriously, like you could just bring that up and round it. Doesn't have to be so angular. Smooth these lines down. Get that pocket clip at a little bit different angle. Make this a little bit longer, you know? Make the version just slightly bigger. Um, I forget what the specs were on it, but it's just, you know, it's just over seven and a half inches, seven and three quarters. Maybe make it an eight inch knife. And I think it would be great. Get rid of some of these hot spots. Just get rid of that right there, especially. And then round this down, chamfer this down. Um, even in the closed position, that's pretty tall. You could get away with chamfering that over and rounding that over to where it marries up here. And I think that would do a lot right there to get rid of that hot spot. Knock this off, round it over, do something to get rid of this. If you're putting aesthetics above comfort, you're gonna have a knife that looks really nice, but really isn't that functional. And then again, this sharpening choil, with the angle you have here and where this pocket clip is at, you're gonna hit. You're, as you're sharpening, you're going to hit that on the stone as you're sharpening. You pretty much are if you're freehand sharpening. It, it just, it's in the way. It comes up too far. So just too many things wrong with this knife for me to give it a thumbs up. It's beautiful. I tried so hard to love it and I just can't. So I apologize, guys. That's what I got on it. Let's turn this around, do some final thoughts and send you out about your day. Go guys, the Wee Knife Company press check, and it is such a disappointment because it is such a gorgeous knife. I think if they just did a couple of small things that this knife would be a winner, but it's just, it's got, it's so much more negative than positive on this one. So I'm sorry. I, I know a lot of people love the Lishowitz designs. I have one here that I really like, but this one is definitely, definitely not one I could go in on uh, just for, just for the, the feel. Like it's just, 
to quote Nick Shabazz, it's like a handful of hornets. So guys, there you go. Uh, if you like the content, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give it a thumbs down. If you want to support the channel, it's as simple as like, share, subscribe, drop a comment, hit the bell icon. If you do hit the bell icon, make sure that you've got notifications turned on on your device or you will not get notified of the three, sometimes three things that go up a day. I did not put up a short on, on 4th of July yesterday. So if you want to support the channel financially, you can do it a bunch of ways. Like I said before, in the beginning of the video, I have a bunch of affiliate links down below on Amazon, Blade HQ, all kinds of stuff. Anything you purchase with those affiliate links, I get a little bit of it at checkout and it doesn't cost you anything extra, especially the Amazon ones because it doesn't matter what you click on after you use my Amazon affiliate link, anything you purchase throughout the, your, your, that login, I get credit for it. So if you're buying shampoo and chia seeds, please use my affiliate links. Other ways you can do it, I have a membership tab down below. I have a tier-based membership. Pick the tier to get you what you want out of the memberships. Remember, everyone saves $5 off my sharpening service, and everyone has access to my Gilded server. We chat, we share, I have a knife trade, all kinds of stuff that goes on on there. And I have a merchandise store on Ember Shirt Co. where you can pick up some of my merchandise, other creators' merchandise. I've set up a coupon code that will save you 10% anywhere on Ember Shirt Co. And that coupon code is Crazy Sharp, all in word, capital C, capital S, Crazy Sharp. Saves you 10% at checkout. And if you send me pictures of you wearing my merchandise, I will put them in a video. Guys, I love you all. Keep it clean in the comments section. I hope you had a good 4th of July. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. And I will see you in the next video.